Howdy mates, how are we doing? Today is Tuesday, March 2nd, 2021. And I'm out visiting the uh, Mad River Gorge, which is near Springfield, and is also near my university. So this is like one of my weekly getaways from the campus. I know I've done videos here in the past, actually. And just a little bit ago, I did my first Facebook Live video here. However, though, I didn't really have too much dialogue in terms of what uh, this place has to offer. So... Without further ado, let's let's get into it. Okay, so here, right ahead of us, this is an exam. Those are examples of slump blocks. So what happened in the past was due to it could be from rain. So like for instance, the three freeze thaw cycle where there's like ice wedges in the rock, it could have caused some of these boulders to essentially fall off of this cliff face. So that is actually an example of physical weathering. So that basically, you know, it doesn't necessarily change the composition of the rock. It's just a big rock breaking down into a smaller rock. It, but it's still the same exact mass. <laughs> Hopefully you guys understood what I meant. Uh, think of it as something like, okay, you have like a, I don't know, say you have a nutty bar, for instance, and you just break it in half. So there's no composition that's been lost from the nutty bar. However, it's just broken down into smaller pieces, but it still has the same, it's still the same matter. So then, here we're going to show an example of chemical weathering that takes place here. Alright, so you see all these uh, little pock marks right here? These are a result of past chemical weathering. So what happens is, water has a capability of getting into that rock... And it causes something known as dissolution. You may be thinking, what does that mean for some of you? Well, that essentially means the water is dissolving the rock, thus altering its structure, in a sense. And what happens is those that dissolved rock can make its way into the Mad River, or it can contribute to the soil formation through means of hydrolysis. So through hydrolysis, the rock material that breaks down in terms of chemical structure, it will eventually form into clay when you get deeper into the soil. And usually clay has like a reddish color to it, and that's simply the case because of oxidation. But, yes, essentially this gorge exists because of both the physical and the chemical weathering that takes place here. So then, another reason of, another component of what has this gorge functioning is you have something known as erosion. I'm sure many of you are very familiar with that. So eventually, in due time, with the Mad River, if it is able to rise over time, it can actually interact with some of these uh, slump blocks, and it will eventually carry it into the river. So you have to think, like, in due time, a lot of these rocks that are here will eventually make their way into the river may not happen right away. This is something that takes a lot of time. Geologic time. It could take even... I mean, for all I know, these slump blocks may not be completely broken down and go into the river once it's past my lifetime. That's the amazing part of geology. It's practically ageless. It takes its time. It, you know? 
doesn't go by age necessarily. It just practically does what it wants. But yeah, the gorge. So as a means of wrapping it all up, the gorge experiences weathering and erosion. And due to both of those processes, that is why, that is how we have the gorge here. So we have that rock wall, and it's a bit terraced, and then that gets into the river valley. And then as you go to the other side, you can see there's another rock wall over there as well. So you have to think the processes are exactly equal on both sides of the river. But it's the river that really carries out the process. Huh. It's all connected, in a sense. And this happens practically at any gorge. And what's remarkable about Mad River Gorge is this is actually a pre-glacial gorge. So this place even existed before uh, glaciers were even here. But then you have Clifton Gorge, for instance. That is an example of a post-glacial. So essentially the river, which is Little Miami River, that practically started existing once the glaciers receded. But Mad River has been here much longer than that. It's quite amazing. So like all those processes that I mentioned, it's a continuous process. It never stops. Mother Nature never shuts down, ever. Never goes to sleep. So as opposed to uh, the city never sleeps, well, you could say the same thing for uh, Mother Earth, too. She never sleeps. She's always active. So I would say, <laughs> in terms of activity... In that aspect, Mother Earth could be healthy, but how some people are treating it, though, well, that's a different, that's a different story. So, all right. Hope all of you learned something in the video, and I actually shared a video not too long ago in the group page, where actually my close colleague of mine, Dr. John Ritter, actually did a video out here as well. So, if you ever want to learn more about this place, that's a great video to watch too so all right hope all of you enjoy your tuesday and journey on a journey is out take care folks